I'm very impressed for having accompanied Servini judge for have accompanied or being present when she took uh, testimony from the victims. Well, because sometimes people ask me, are we still on time to bring charges? Aren't we fighting against time? Yes, we are fighting against time, but not legal time, but hu human time. Because claimants are dying, are silencing themselves due to physical problems, uh, diseases, poor health. And actually, one of the persons that we wanted to take a statement from, well, we thought about visiting him to the uh, nursing home where he was. But well, actually, we didn't get any response from the authorities or from our request. So we, well, we visited another witness, uh, but we visited this witness in the, in the hospital. He was really happy to have us there and to be able to tell what happened to him for those seven years of his life that he was in that uh, concentration camp, working in that s slavery condition, so to speak. He is 97 years of age, and at that time he was in hospital. Well, first of all, he was visited by the judge, and he was happy he was feeling better. Then when we visited him, he devoted us uh, more time. He was feeling better. And it was so moving because I told him, you are a hero. You are a hero. He was a member of the Republican Army. And then he was made prisoner. The next day, we got the cooperation from um, Judge in Guernica, and we went to that court to take a statement. And what it is positive in this type of uh, hard cases, it is always very important to be positive so that the victims are not disencouraged. So actually, it was so impressive to have the cooperation from this local judge, from the Spanish judge. She herself took statements to two victims of the uh, two victims, two brothers. Well, the Argentinian judge was there with his secretary. The statement was official a statement that had been taken at the Spanish court by a Spanish judge. And interesting was that the victims were looking, were claiming for their father, but both of them had been actually, they have been actually arrested. One of them, well, the sister had been tortured, another brother had been uh, put in prison, had been raided. And still now, well, these two victims were filing a claim for their father. And before they told us about themselves, we who were there, were, we had to ask them to tell us specifically about their case, about their situation. So when one of the brothers finished his statement, well, both brothers were older people, and we said, well, would you like to add anything at the end of his statement? And then he said, yes, I would like to know why. I would like to know the reason why we are having a judge from another country taking statements. That was a question that left us a bit, uh, well, in shocked. So we couldn't really explain to him everything, what was going on. Well, but I'm 
very much sure that he was aware. He knew perfectly all right what was happening and why the Argentinian justice was here. I refer to that travel as the travel of justice. This is a travel that responds, it's a response to other difficulties that we have encountered. Uh, well, so for instance, we were sending out requests. We sometimes we didn't get full response, sometimes only partial response. So the judge was proposed to travel. The judge could not travel. Then we proposed video conferences. Video conferences at the end of the day were not possible. But some victims, some witnesses traveled to Argentina, but others could not travel. So 15 victims travel. However, there are 300 claimants. So as I say, some well, video conferences uh, took place. But at the end of the day, the judge traveled. So the travel of the judge, as well as the conference, well, had best made progress. And then another, another frustration that we had, that was the refusal of extradition. All this is coming and going because this refusal, this refusal of extradition made us see very clearly, as Borges said about Spaniards and our dialogue with them. Well, we are separated by a whole language. And now this time we can talk about a whole legal language that is separating us. Well, because we were asking for uh, extradition, extradition on crimes against humanity, on tortures that had been um, written down. So we all know that we are talking about a plan, that there was a plan behind it, that there was a context. And the context is essential when it comes to crimes against humanity. These are not one-off cases. These are crimes committed within a context of crimes against humanity. Because when we are discussing about, we are discussing international crimes against humanity and genocide, to bring them together and to classify them, to classify these serious crimes. Well, these crimes are classified based on the gravity of them, on the severity of them. So we don't really need to have any connection, as it is referred to in international law, that is to say territorial territoriality or nationality of the perpetrator. No, we are just interested or in the gravity of the crime so that it doesn't go unpunished. And when the whole system is very interested in that, of it not going unpunished. In Argentina, despite of all the problems that we encountered, Well, other than the time frame that goes from 36 to 77, so here we have a long, many, many forms of victimization. I am always bringing this with me because I don't really want to leave anyone out, to forget anyone. Well, victims are people that were shot, thrown into mass graves, forced labor, mothers that had their children stolen, those who were tortured. Well, those that children that were forced to work, retaliation, people that had to well, exiliated people, people who had to leave. 
saw victimization that also went through the borders, through the Pyrenees. And people had to, well, to find refuge. They have to seek refuge in France. They were victimized also in Nazi concentration camps. In Outhausen, many Spaniards went there and died there. We have people, there are people in Spain whose whole family disappeared in concentration camps. So we have different forms of victimization. So therefore, we really want to fine tune, we really want to be specific in our case. So I don't really want to take long, uh, longer than 15 minutes. But in any case, I would like to make a brief reference to refer to the problem. The problem whenever it, well, the justice is intended to be, uh, well, when the, the, the justice is applied only nationally. National limits make the law explode. So that is to say, and first of all, we have to try the limits of the law to see whether those limits, those boundaries are resistant or not. But the limits of national rights cannot really face these serious crimes. These crimes where we have the direct participation or the protection on the part of the state. In these cases, for these cases, we need to recur. We need to use to international justice. And that's why they have recurred to this Argentina justice, because the Argentina justice could see that it was necessary for those boundaries to explode, that is to say, to have a derogation on the impunity laws, that it was necessary to modify the Constitution so that the treaties on human rights were directly enforced. There are 16 T treaties on human rights that can be directly applied. The judges have the possibility to enforce that. Legislation has been modified so that the Association of Human Rights can be the claimant in the crimes for in the in the trials of crimes against humanity. Argentina is implementing universal jurisdiction not only in the Spanish case, but also when it tries when when takes to justice genocide cases. So therefore, universal jurisdiction, when focused on the seriousness of the crimes, help us understand that Spanish victims have seen, have recognized the Argentina system as the legal system that would provide them justice, justice that we were otherwise uh, prevented from accessing to it in their own countries. So when we are talking about the Spanish case and going back after the amendment of the law on universal jurisdiction, we are going, they are really going really backwards and backwards. So we are going back even further, further back than the cosmopolitan law proposed by Kant. We are going back to old Roman law when we had a character who was Homo Sacer. Homo Sacer was a person who was out of the jurisdiction, out of human jurisdiction. But it was uh, Homo Sacer who didn't fall within divine jurisdiction either. It was a person who was exposed to any kinds of violence, violence coming from anyone. He could be assassin, he could be murdered and killed, and then the executioner would go and punish. So let us not look at it as from the viewpoint of the executioner who goes and punish. Let's look at it from the viewpoint of the victim, those who have been assassinated, murdered, those who have been victimized. 
So these are our homo sacer. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop the number of homo sacers. Okay, this is my conclusion. Thank you. What will happen when Justice Vini completes the investigation and Spain refuses to extradite those uh, prosecuted or defendants? We've seen this with an example of two people who are prosecuted for tortured, tortured. And for example, Utrea Morina uh, and other former ministers of justice will, what, what will happen to them, those ministers and the Franco's regime? Well, I would like to add two more things that I forgot to mention. And you don't forget just what's not important. You just forget it because you have other things in mind. And there are some other factors. So, for me, it is very, 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 very much important. And it's also partly replying to the question. And in Argentina, we've seen association-based movements. Uh, we, we see that this is out there. But we've seen how social movements have been organized and articulated around regional platforms. And we've seen that there is this coordinator, state coordinator, that makes this, make it possible to stay in contact with victims and also reporting at consulates. This is possible now, which was not in the past. So this is all worth mentioning, because these will create added social pressure, which is necessary for the progression of justice, as Carlos Slipoy mentioned yesterday, what it meant to us, mothers and grandmothers of Maya Square, what they meant to us. And the Spanish social movement, I guess, uh, this would be similar to the one of the mothers of the Maya Square. We have that hope. What's going to happen? Well, it is happening already. Those that have been accused or indicted, rather, and whose extradition has been refused, have found shelter, and that's here in Spain. So they cannot leave, because then they will have to be arrested according to arrest warrants that have been issued internationally. So we've made some progress. What's happening then? Well, the ideal thing would be to have it as it happened in Argentina when trials were initiated in Spain. There was one trial that was completed and that was then resumed by Argentina's justice. The ideal thing, uh, ideal thing would be, as I say in my book, is for the state to take charge of their uh, judicial sovereignty. And that's uh, to say that it's uh, the state, as as the state is given up on their sovereignty, in its uh, on its sovereignty, when decides not to prosecute them. What about appeals? Well, we need to go step by step. You make your way as you walk, and you make your justice as as you walk. So this is not the finish line, but this is the, 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 the pathway that we take. It, it, some people come and say, it's the first time that I've talked to a judge or, or, or in front of a camera, TV camera. And uh, well, they even feel excited when you, they see you on TV afterwards. And those people who are suspect of being criminals of um, crimes against humanity, was the first time that they were brought before the High Court. So let's see how it moves on. That's what I wanted to say. And then, secondly, the other way around, or, or contrary to other people, well, I, I tend to forget the most important things, and I forgot to acknowledge and, and thank the Foundation for